Good afternoon, Africa, Africa, the tree of life, and of course, this is Human TV Africa. My name is Kato Mukasa. I'm a Ghana lawyer interested in issues development. That's why I'm here sharing with you country profiles. Please, I want to encourage you to subscribe to us. Uh, our YouTube channel is Human TV Africa, as well as our Facebook name. We are Human TV Africa. You also have an email. I, our email is info at humanstvafrica.com plus our WhatsApp number. That is our WhatsApp number. Our communication officer will be able to reach out to you. You may want to be part of the studio. You may want to be part of this conversation. You may want to join us in our shows wherever you are. Remember, we are a registered non-government organization working in different countries in the world. We have offices. We have uh, studios in the UK, we have studios in the US, we have our studios in Uganda, we have studios in Zambia, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, and Kenya, and we are growing every day. Remember to join us and send us an email. Now, in the studio is uh, Hussein Baya, who is doing the production for this show and based in Kenya. Today, we are talking about Zambia, a beautiful country right in Africa. Zambia is not far away from East Africa, and Zambia is a country with a largest Bantu ethnic grouping. The Bantu speaking people are in Zambia. I'm a Muntu, so I have so many relatives in Zambia. Zambia is a very lovely country, a country with about 19 million people, a country with copper, the seventh ranked country to produce copper in the world, and sadly, Copper mines are largely owned by companies and, of course, the government of Zambia. Now, let us look at the map of Zambia, and then we appreciate more about Zambia. Talking about Zambia, that's the map of Zambia. Much of it is green. I love green. Green means nature. And, of course, life. Red is our blood. And, of course, black is the color of our skin. And, of course, we have that orange which unites us with everyone in the world. Now, that is Zambia, the ego, and all that. Zambia has 752 uh, uh, square uh, kilometers, uh, Zambia area, and Zambia is a landlocked country in Southern Africa with a tropical climate and consists of mostly high plateaus with some hills and mountains. Uh, it is deserted by river valleys, uh, which is two that extent to 90 
thousand square miles. That is Zambia, and kilometers seventy-five uh, uh, thousand uh, six fourteen uh, kilometers. Now that is Zambia. It is the number thirty-ninth largest country in the world. Zambia is big. It gets position number thirty-nine largest country in the world. But remember, Zambia has only nineteen million people. It is slightly smaller than Chile. Now, looking at the population, of, I've told you it's having 19 million people, close to 20 million people. The growth rate there is 2.9. Uh, and then birth rate, Zambians are good at producing children. They're at 34% uh, birth rate, 34, 86, uh, 34 .86 birth rate per 1,000 live birth. And of course, death rate is quite high in Zambia. And of course, so if I ask you, if you ask me, the most killer disease in Zambia is HIV. Yes, we have to warn everyone about protecting themselves from getting HIV. Life expectancy in Zambia is 66 years, not bad. And of course, for males, it is 64, but for the uh, females, it's 68. So the average is 66 years. Fertility rate is not bad. They are almost having five children per woman. And of course, infant mortality rate is also very bad, doing badly there. Net immigration, net migration is 0.24% per 1,000 of the population. Now that is Zambia in brief, and we are continuing to see other stats about Zambia. Now population, I've told you, that's how population is. Zambia, the neighbors are uh, democratic. Republic of Congo, we have Mozambique, we have uh, Malawi, we have Zimbabwe there, and of course we have Tanzania up there. And that is Zambia. Population, I told you, is quite manageable at almost 20 million people. Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Zambia, Malawi, the neighbors of Zambia are right there, Botswana, Namibia, Angola, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and DRC Congo, and of course Tanzania. That is how Zambia is, remember, Malawi is just close there. Zambia is one of the countries, the shortest border, shortest border, which is just a matter of kilometers, matter of, uh, you know, the, the border between Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Namibia is so close to each other that you can move from one country to another within a matter of 20 minutes. You can cross from Zimbabwe if you're on a border to Zimbabwe, uh, to Botswana, to Namibia, to Zambia. You can imagine that kind of border. It gives you a, a kind of proximity to each other, which is very interesting. Now, the biggest cities in Zambia, of course, is Lusaka. Of course, we have uh, uh, the most popular one, which is Livingstone, which is not seen on this map, right there down the map. We have Selanga, Mongo, uh, Nat Park, Livingstone. We have Kafue National Park. We have Kabwe, we have Undora, Rusha, and Chingola. Sorwezi and others. That is Zambia. It's a beautiful country, I should say. It has Munchinga Mountains, and that is it. Now, when you look at the ethnic map, ethnological map of Zambia, of course, Northern Zambia, Zambia was called Northern Rhodesia. Remember, before they got their independence, Zambia was called Northern Rhodesia. It was ruled by the British for a long time until when Kenneth Kaunda uh, took over Zambia. And by 1963-64, Zambia was fully independent under Kenneth Kaunda, the man, the father of uh, humanism in Zambia. Now, Zambia has this kind of demography in terms of ethnological map. Of course, uh, you can see the divisions of Zambia, administrative divisions of Zambia, the central, the copper bed, the eastern, the Rupala, the Rusaka, Mushinga, Northern, Northwestern, Southern, Western. That's how Zambia is divided. And you can see the populations in these divisions. And of course, Lusaka has the highest number of uh, inhabitants, which is about 3 million and that 100,000. Now the rest, of course, have 2 million, 1 million, 1 million. Remember, Zambia has a small population by then, which is about 19 million people. Of course, the president there, at the moment is Hakainle Itirema, born on 4th June, 1962, and is a businessman, a farmer, and a politician. He has been a political failure for a long time. That man has been a political failure for a long time, uh, contesting and uh, losing elections until he won this uh, time round. And it brings in 
his expertise as a businessman managing Zambia. And I have some good news because he is trying to manage corruption in this country, but at the same time, it's very homophobic. Let us look at the culture in Zambia. Zambia, I told you, majority of them are banned to speaking people. They share so much with people in East Africa. The dancers are almost like the dancers in Kenya, the dancers in Uganda, the dancers in Rwanda, dancers in Congo. Those are the dancers we are going to get in Zambia. Zambia is a very good country, I should tell you. Very beautiful people, welcoming people. And of course, people that love their culture, the culture of sharing, the culture of dancing, the culture of singing, the culture of art and craft. Those are Zambian people. Of course, they are very good when it comes to fishing, and those are Zambians. I told you, Zambians, majority of them are Bantu-speaking people. That's a market, one of the markets in the villages somewhere in Zambia. Typical African village setting, typical African market. Remember, Zambia has a match of maize. They have no bananas, per se, but they have much of maize and rice and other foodstuffs. Now, what is Zambia famous for? Zambia is famous for their water-rich countries. And one of the water-rich countries in Africa, Zambia has five vast lakes, three major rivers, and 17 waterfalls, and various wetland areas. In addition to major conservative areas, the country also has considerable mineral wealth. A copper is mined in the north, and it's a very big source of income in, uh, in Ghana, in, in Zambia. I told you that um, much of it, much of the uh, Zambian copper mines is owned by the government of Zambia, but also uh, which has about 90% shares in Mopani copper mines uh, company from Kalisa Investment Corporation. And of course, um, Mopani was initially the sole owner. But of course, Zambia mines are also owned by the Ministry of uh, Mines and Mineral Development, but also their private owners of the Zambian copper market. Let us go, uh, please, to other uh, tabs and we see who owns uh, much of the wealth in Zambia. Now, this is Zambia when it comes to tourism. Zambia has very beautiful tourist sites. Zambia has very beautiful tourist sites. You can look at that. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. I want people to observe how beautiful these sites are in Zambia. You see how beautiful these sites are in Zambia. Quite very impressive. Look at that. Look at those waterfalls. And look at how natural those waterfalls are. They are called Victoria Falls on the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe. International board of both countries pass between these four. You can imagine the international board of both countries pass between these falls. Now, this is very historical. And also, this is very wonderful. The Victoria Falls in Zambia are uh, eye-catching. It's a place I would recommend you to go and watch. Let us continue to see other wonders of Zambia. I told you that Zambia has um, something very wonderful. The population density is manageable. Look at the animals. The wildlife of Zambia is quite impressive. You get all these animals in Zambia, the lions, the elephants, the gillafies. The, the rhinos and all those other animals you want to watch. You will find them in Zambia, trust me. Zambia has all those wonderful animals. The crocodiles, they are there in Zambia. The, the, the gillafins, the antelopes, they are there in Zambia. Zambia has enough meat, if you ask me. They have cows, they have a food, though sometimes it's a challenge, given the recent changes in the environment. But Zambia still is a beautiful country. That is the Rusaka. A part of the capital city of Zambia. The roads are good, fair, good enough. And you can see, you can find those black beauties right there in Zambia. And Zambia is quite very impressive when it comes to uh, uh, acceptance of uh, uh, refugees. There are quite a number of refugees in Zambia, though the challenge right now in Zambia is the homophobia. Many people in Zambia are homophobic. They hate homosexuals. They, in fact, kill homosexuals. The reports I have right now from Zambia is that they are killing homosexuals from Uganda. They are witch hunting them, they are mistreating them. So that's another sad note I have to make in this documentary about Zambia, that the people in Zambia are increasingly homophobic, including their president is increasingly 
homophobic. Apart from that, Zambia is a beautiful country, a beautiful uh, villages, uh, of course, uh, very, 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 very uh, uh, hardworking people right there in Zambia. Of course, we know Zambia uh, have a bit of athletics, a uh, bit of um, marathon learners, uh, football team, uh, country. Uh, we know Zambia as a human community, that Zambia had the first president of Zambia, uh, Kenneth Kaunda, who declared Zambia to be a humanist nation, a humanist nation, a nation run on Ubuntu principles. And it was put in their work plan, in their constitution, their constitutional assembly in 1964, uh, accepted Zambia to be a humanistically run country, a country run to favor everyone that could go there. That is Kenneth Kaunda and his government. What happened when Kenneth Kaunda went? And we had Sata and the others. And we had these other presidents. They became more populistic. They became more populistic presidents. And they did away with humanism in Zambia. Zambia had special days of humanism where people could be reminded to love one another, regardless of their differences. When these other presidents came in, they rubbished whatever Kaunda had done and dictated Zambia, a Christian nation. Zambia is the only country in Africa I know that is a theocracy. Listen to it. Zambia is the only country in Africa that I know that is a theocracy. They claim to be Christians. The state in Zambia is fused with the church. To me, this is a drawback. To me, this is something that is unforgivable, that you remove a country from moving on a secular basis where everyone is welcome. And you say, this country belongs to Jesus Christ. How about the Muslims? How about the Buddhists? How about the humanists like me? How about the atheists like me? How about the non-believers? Now, this is a challenge with Zambia. The only country I know in Africa or to, make, to, 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 to correct it, in sub-Saharan Africa that is run as a theocracy that has Christianity fused with administration, that they have a state religion, that is a Christian nation, and they go ahead and put it in their constitution. As I speak today, our viewers, people who are gay in Zambia are being witch-hunted. And sadly, there are many Ugandans that have gone to Zambia to seek refuge. They are under attack from a people they went to protect them. Now, this is sad about Zambia because Zambia has become a Christian theocracy. Apart from saying we are Christians, they have even put it in their constitution. It is sad that an African country basically wants to say they are more Christians than countries that gave them Christianity. British government gave them Christianity. The imperialists gave them Christianity. But now there are more Christians than the British government that gave them Christianity. That is the downside of Zambia, the theocracy, the intolerance of people that are different from their thinking, from the thinking of the politicians is one thing that is going to hurt Zambia going forward the intolerance for divergent views, the intolerance for other people who don't believe the way others believe is something that is going to hurt Zambia going forward. Regardless of that, Zambia remains a lovely country, good for tourist destination, a country that has been largely peaceful. We give Zambia credit for having maintained peace in terms of political transition, Zambia hasn't got, had an insurgency. Zambia hasn't changed government through bloodshed. Zambia has been largely a peaceful nation when it comes to politicking. They have seen presidents come and go. They have seen presidents come and go. So there have been good governance when it comes to politicking. I can't say elections are free and fair, but I can say at least there is less bloodshed compared to countries like Uganda and Kenya, 
where people normally have to go to war whenever they go to vote for president. So we give credit to Zambia. But the other challenge is that Zambia is one of the most poor countries in the world. 60% of Zambians cannot earn $1 a day. 60% of Zambians cannot earn $1 a day. Now, remember, there are only 19 million people. Now, when you calculate 60% of 19 million people, that is quite a number of millions of people below the poverty line. And remember, their most earning source of income is copper. And sadly, much of these mines are also owned or controlled by foreign investors. Now, this is the sad part of Zambia, that the economy is completely in shambles. The economy is doing badly. Zambia has a debt burden that is threatening to take away their independence. The Chinese are demanding Zambians lots of money. IMF, old bank. So the debt burden of Zambia is out of the window. That is another challenge with Zambia. Regardless, Zambia remains a beautiful country. I want to invite the producer to again give us the map of Zambia as we close this show so that you can see how beautiful Zambia is, how beautiful the colors of Zambia are. Their national flag is quite very impressive. Zambia is a good country, regardless of the challenges, especially of lack of intolerance, lack of tolerance to those who are different from the majority, lack of intolerance to people to love differently. That one puts Zambia down. But on the positive side, Zambia has very good people, very happy people, and of course, very hardworking people. It's a good country, which I would still recommend for you to go and check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe to Mass TV Africa to give you this and more about countries in the world. This is Country Profile, and my name is, is Kato Mukasa. Of course, in the studio was Usabi Baya to do this show. See you in the next one.